Hello everybody and good afternoon. It's about 3.40 where I am here in Canada and it is a beautiful freezing rainy kind of day and uh, today I'm actually working on making sure that the replay from last night's fourth and final webinar about decision making tools is ready to go and be sent to your inbox. Well, hopefully today. I want to get it done before the weekend. Anyway, I was as I'm editing it, I, I was reminded of something that I had said last night that I thought, oh, I really want to share this with people because I know that a lot of us, uh, certainly when I started, felt really nervous about selling. And uh, I admitted last night in my class that when I was 19 and I was selling insurance, I actually, sorry, I'm just making sure that I can see comments, um, that I actually, uh, left the industry because of my fear of selling. I had gone through all the courses, got certified, booked a lot of appointments as a result of a warm lead list I had been giving, given. But when I actually had to go to the appointments, I freaked out, I panicked, and I just handed my agenda over to somebody. And I actually walked away entirely from all of that time and effort I had put into learning how to be a life insurance agent because the fear I was experiencing around selling was just, it was just so real. And I think if you are an introvert, you kind of know what I mean, but when you add a, an anxiety uh, label onto that or any kind of shyness or, you know, those kinds of other things that add on to introversion that really give the whole world the impression that all introverts are shy, um, that's really, that's really what the whole thing was, was mostly doing to me at the time, I, I felt so sick to my stomach that I actually, you know, I'd, I'd hear ringing in my ears and I'd get dizzy. I would feel completely flushed, felt totally sick to my stomach. It really did feel a lot like a panic attack. And of course, there were more physical things that were going on. But um, I wanted to talk today about why, where does it come from, for goodness sake? Um, it's not like we don't all spend our entire lives selling something. Uh, whether it's an idea to a family member or whether it's the product that we actually are um, positioned to sell as part of our job, no matter what, we all sell. And so um, I wanted to pop on here and talk about that. And for anybody who doesn't know me, hi, my name is Danielle Wilson, and I help introverted female wellness coaches to overcome their fear and anxiety in sales conversations and uh, create consistent income because you know, consistent income is obviously a very desirable thing. And when we have anxiety or nervousness around selling, and we know that our ability to sell is directly proportional to our success, we know we have to learn how to sell. And so um, I just wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about that today. And what we're going to talk about specifically is the old paradigm of selling and what those old archetypes are around salesmen. And so um, I just want to say, if you're joining me live, can you also please just drop some kind of a, maybe a hashtag live or a, any kind of an emoji somewhere in the comments or to hit that like button. And the reason for that is that it helps to boost the Facebook algorithm. And then that of course lets others in the group know that I am doing this little live today. And it's not specifically a training and yet, so I'm, I'm going to put this out there because I'm hoping that what this is going to do is it's going to trigger something in your brain that makes you go, right, yeah. I did a meditation earlier today with uh, one of the people I'm connected with on Facebook and we were talking in that meditation or he was talking in that medication and I was pondering, of course, the whole notion of uh, how attached we are to things. It's about It was about letting go of attachments and it just was so liberating, but anyway. Let's talk about that old paradigm of salesmanship. And I want you to think to all of the movies that you watched when you were a child, all of the cartoons, all of the, all of the influences that you had, whether it was from people in your family, whether it was from the media or magazines or books or anything else like that, who was, who was the salesman back then, right? Who was that guy? And that guy was, probably selling vacuum cleaners door to door. Maybe he was selling the latest widget or gadget. And if you watched the movie Founder, which was about uh, the gentleman who actually uh, took over McDonald's and turned it into the 
megalomaniac kind of corporation that it is. That's exactly what he did, is that he was a door-to-door -door salesman. And here's the thing about those door-to-door -door salesmen back in the day. They were 100% commission-based. Now, I don't know about you, I currently, as a self-employed person, as an entrepreneur, I'm solely responsible for my income, right? There's nobody handing me a paycheck. And that was really the same thing with these guys is that nobody was handing them a paycheck for just trying, for just showing up. They only got money. They only earned an income and they could only feed their family and pay their mortgages and, and do all the things, right? Especially at a time when men were out in the workforce and doing the work and women were at home. There was this added pressure on these salesmen to produce. If they didn't produce, they didn't bring home any kind of money, which meant that there was no food on the table, right? Think about that for just one moment. If you were in that situation, how would you feel? And I say this because I think that in this current climate, as a coach and because I help other coaches, it's kind of the same idea. If you've got feast and famine happening in your business because you know, today you woke up and you were feeling uneasy and you knew you had a sales conversation and then you went into it and then you said the wrong thing and then you just felt really dumb and so you just talked and you just blew it. Frankly, you just blew it and you knew you did and you didn't stop yourself. You spiraled down that roller coaster of blowing it and uh, you think about it. There is an enormous amount of pressure to make the sale. There was then and there is now and really think about what pressure does pressure creates this stress that then creates a desperation and so this old paradigm of selling where it was hey how you doing there's a lot you know it was trying to turn on charm it was trying to find the easy way in oh my gosh it was trying to get that woman to seriously not slam that door in your face Right? And so different tactics would have been developed by this sales force of people who were out there literally just trying to feed their children. Right? Would some have gotten better at it than others? Of course they would. But we all have comparitis, whether we want to or not, we have comparitis. And so imagine you're out there, you're hustling, you're busting your butt, you're working your hardest to get that, that vacuum sold so that your kid can have food on the table this weekend my gosh because it's been a week since you brought any money home and you walk up to mrs smith's door and mrs smith's door is kind you know she's kind of sweet she's a little bit amiable and she doesn't want to hurt your feelings and so she lets you in right and you get to show her the vacuum and, and you're like oh yeah i'm doing it i'm doing it and then she says no no thank you and it could be for any number of reasons. Whatever the reasons are, are irrelevant, but she says no. And what happens in that salesman's mind, because he's going along thinking, I got this, I got this, she's listening, I'm hooking her, I'm, and she's getting it, I'm, I'm gonna sell it to her, I'm gonna sell it to her. And then she pulls the rug out from under him. And what do you think happens as he's picturing his child not eating again this weekend? Obviously desperation tactics click in. And that's really where our archetypes and our, our idea, our beliefs about salesmen come in because now he has to try, you know, more unique, more creative. He has to just, you know, he has to try to play with her heart. He's got to try to manipulate her into saying yes, because he needs that money, right? So if we are in a place a state of being where we feel desperate, where we feel that we need to make this. Imagine what comes through. Imagine what desperation breeds and the kinds of things that we are willing to try, right? So ultimately, what you try will obviously be by your own design. You can choose because everything is a choice. You can choose. I'm going to do just like those old school kinds of salesmen did and I'm just going to try everything. I'm going to throw everything I've got at it. Everything I've got. That's one method. Another method is run and hide. Oh my God, I can't do it. I got to go. Give it to somebody else. That's another option. And the third method is to say, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. And knowing that I went from being 
terrified of having actual sales conversations to the point I gave up on a career I had been working on already at that point for six months. If you are here, you've been working on your business for six months and you're trying and it has nothing to do with consistency or lack of effort. If this is strictly about your own ability, the things that you are putting up in your own way, the desperation, the I'm not good enough, the do they really want to work with me, the oh my gosh, my offer's not big enough, oh, I, I, I'm not intelligent enough, I don't have the credentials, whatever it is that is getting in your way, let's talk about that a little bit. Drop me a comment and, and tell me what is your biggest, most burning question about how to be a better salesperson. Because I've said this a few times, it really starts in the mind, right? Whether you think you can do a thing or whether you think you cannot. You know how I love my Henry Ford. Whether you think you can do a thing or whether you think you cannot, you're right. So let's try to start shifting you into believing that you can do this. And if you know that you can actually use techniques that were designed by an introvert who walked away from a career out of terror of selling and then turned into, well, I'm, I'm very good at selling. I hate using the word masterful, even though it's been used about me, it seems a little bit disingenuine, but anyway, it's embarrassing. But I am good at selling. And the reason I'm good at selling is because I decided I'm going to be good at this. And those old ways don't work for me. I am not comfortable doing those. I am not going to go and chase people that I know. I am not going to do sleazy DMs. I am not going to do um, all of the different things that you get encouraged to do um, by people who are making their way in the online world um, and who are you know, out there hustling and saying, I've got an offer. I'm just not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it my way because I need to feel good about myself at the end of the day. And that's what I'm teaching. I'm teaching people how to feel good about their day's work. I'm teaching people how to feel good about creating true connections with the people in front of them that are potential prospects. I'm teaching you how to not be feeling desperate that you have to make every single sale that comes along and instead you can be very selective. I'm going to work with you on how are we going to change our mind about this? What are some of the things that you put up in front of yourself, the actual mental obstacles that you put up in front of yourself that we can help to break down? What are some of those? That's what we do when we work together along with here. Here's the psychology of why you want to do A before B. And here's the psychology of why you want to say it like this instead of this and why the language matters. Those are all part of the techniques that I that I do teach. Um, although, excuse me, although that may sound kind of, oh my gosh, I'm not interested in learning psychology. Don't worry, you don't need to learn psychology. You just need to learn the simple proven system that I've got that will take you from low to mid to high so that you can actually do that and feel really really comfortable about doing it and not feel that sleazy icky uncomfortable feeling of days gone by where oh my gosh if I don't sell this I don't eat this week and neither do my kids does that make sense I hope that makes sense once again if you are an introverted female wellness coach and you are feeling anxious about sales, fearful of sales, nervous, whatever language it is you describe, use to describe that really icky feeling you get in the pit of your stomach, maybe in your temples or your head that ringing in your ears. If you get that too, and what you want more than anything is to actually be self-employed. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to be the captain of your own ship. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk about how we help you get over some of those hurdles and how we help you feel much more comfortable in sales conversations and actually convert, convert those sales and actually have a, a consistent income. Okay. I hope you all have a wonderful day. It is still freezing rain over here. No sunshine. I'm going to get back to editing that video now. And if you'd like a, if you'd like me to send you the replay, don't forget to let me know, but drop a comment. And I do come back and check the comments. Let me know what it is that you're struggling with in your business and in your mindset. And let's talk about how we can figure out how to get over those. 
All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. There it is. I can never find those videos or those uh, buttons.